So uh, the question says the massless spring of a spring gun has a force constant um, k. So I'm given the spring constant, which is good uh, in Newton per centimeter, but I'll I'll have you deal with it when you plug in numbers. Um, when the gun is aimed vertically, uh, some mass of projectile, I guess that's probably relevant. So let me use a letter M. Projectile is shot to a height uh, of some height above the end of the spring. Uh, let me label it here because there can be a potential ambiguity and I want to make sure I avoid that ambiguity. Uh, how much was the spring compressed initially? What was the... All right, um, so this is another conservation of energy question. And uh, I remember now, portable TA mentions a shortcut where you don't have to go through this intermediate step at all because what you really have to be convinced here is that from the very first step to the last, that energy is conserved. That um, somehow as this ball lives, there isn't some residual energy that's left in the spring. And reading the description, I don't see how there can be. Spring is massless, so it's not, um, so it's not gonna retain any kinetic energy and if it's any color. So, okay, so spring's not gonna retain any energy which means when I look at the energy of this whole system, meaning, um, so I have to be careful here, there's a gravitational potential energy involved with the ball being pushed down, and there's a change in the, oh, gee, and there's a change in the spring potential energy that's associated with the spring being compressed. So taking, taking that energy, coming through here, and then I could have said, you know, imagine all that energy turns into kinetic energy. What is that V? I could have done that. But what's important here is as I go through this step and this final picture here, where this ball is at the top, so the kinetic energy must be zero because at the top speed is zero. And um, this spring has zero spring potential energy. It's what I was talking about, it not retaining any energy. So the potential energy that's involved in this ball reaching this spot, that must be everything. And um, going from this step number one all the way to this step final, uh, I'm confident that energy is conserved. So once you go through that reasoning, once you convince yourself that energy is conserved throughout the entire process, then I can forget all this intermediate step. I, I, all I need to know is, oh, this final stage, final step is reachable, and that energy is conserved throughout the entire process. That, so this long discussion is me justifying the, identifying and justifying the conserved quantity. So I have conserved quantity, total mechanical energy, which is conserved from step one to step final. So let me write that down. So what that means is my initial gravitational potential energy plus my initial spring potential energy plus my initial kinetic energy. All this, some of these three terms, that is the mechanical energy. And what I now wish to say is to say that this is conserved. This does not change. So when I look at my final spring, final gravitational potential energy plus the final spring potential energy plus the final kinetic energy, this is also mechanical energy and that because everything in the setup seems to conserve mechanical energy, that from this uh, step number one to final, this equality holds. Okay, so let me get rid of a few expressions that, um, that I don't really need. 
kinetic energy. It was zero at the start and it's zero at the end. So I don't actually need to deal with the kinetic energy at all. And uh, oh, spring potential energy at the end, very end is also zero. So I can get rid of it. And I believe that's it. Um, so all right, uh, let me write all this down. So I am going to set my zero reference for potential energy to be here. This is where my y is equal to zero. Therefore, my gravitational potential energy is also equal to zero. So with that reference in mind, my initial gravitational potential energy is actually negative because I'm below the reference point. So that should be minus mg, not h, but d. That's the distance here. Minus mgd plus, now as I'm compressing the spring, there's energy getting stored in the spring. So it's a one half uh, spring constant times the displacement squared. Hopefully everyone here remembers the spring potential energy formula. That's equal to the final gravitational potential energy. Uh, this time plus mgh, the lowercase h is the symbol I used. And uh, what we are looking for here is the displacement. Um, so, oh, darn. Okay, so I'm going to need to use a quadratic formula. There's no real way around that. Um, but, you know, before you go on ahead and use quadratic formula, to look at it and double check that this one quantity is the only unknown. Everything else is known. So I have one equation, one unknown, it's solvable. But once you convince yourself of that, then uh, we should have put this into standard form. Um, hopefully everyone here knows standard form for applying quadratic formula. Um, that's uh, the highest uh, order first, one half uh, K, that's my A, D squared, minus MGD. So minus MG is my B. Uh, and I have to move MGH over. So minus MGH. Minus MGH is my C. And um, hopefully everyone remember this quadratic formula. D is equal to B or minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC over 2. So all I have to do is plug in those um, um, those expressions for A, B, and C into the formula. So my D is equal to minus B. So that's a plus MG uh, plus or minus square root of B squared. I, I get that MG squared minus four times a times c. I see one minus sign there, so I'm gonna get plus. Times four, so four times one half is two. Uh, a is k, c is gh, so I guess uh, k, g, h, square root it. Um, divided by uh, two, I feel like I forgot something. Uh, that was supposed to be 2a. <laughs> so divided by 2a. I'll, I'll uh, check my units and make sure I didn't make any mistakes here. Uh, divided by 2a, which is uh, 1 half k. Oops, so OK, uh, 1 half cancels 2. So I have um, k. Let's check the units. Uh, so k has unit of uh, Newton per centimeter. So I think actually if somehow the units on the top works out to be Newtons, then I'm all good. Um, then Newtons will cancel, one over one over centimeter becomes centimeter. So uh, mg, that's force, that's uh, Newtons. Oh, uh, mg squared, that should really be m squared, g squared. Um, so that's Newton squared plus uh, kgh, that's Newton per meter. Um, or centimeter times um, times g meter per second squared, and um, let me write this out. So k 
is newton per meter times g meter per second square um, and h which is meter so let's see have this to cancel out um, now I'm missing something 2k oh, oh, oh uh, I, I miss again I don't know why so instead of gh that should have been mgh uh, mgh all right so newton g times h times meter that's kilogram all right so that's what i was looking for kilogram times meter per second squared that's another newton so that's a newton squared so square root i get newton all right so everything seems to work out so um so there's really only one thing that uh, I need to do here, which is I'm going to choose this positive sign here. The negative sign will give us a negative answer because the thing on the square root is bigger than this. But um, I don't know what negative D even means. Uh, I guess it means if the ball is stuck to the spring, then uh, um, so we are looking for positive D. So let me write that down. So distance d that the spring is compressed by is equal to mg plus square root of m squared g squared plus 2k mgh over k. And, um, and that's it. Um, I guess uh, the rest is kind of plugging in numbers. You are given value of m, you know g, um, you know K, um, you know H. Just make sure you convert everything into SI basic units so that units just to magically work out. Um, so yeah, this is the, how much you compress it. Uh, there are some common mistakes that people can make, uh, which is a sort of like a forgetting this term here, which makes your question easier. I know that's good, but um, but you know, it will give you a correct answer, except in the limit where H is so much larger than D so that the amount it gets compressed by is kind of uh, not, not significant enough to matter. Um, so.